this is our fifth day of industrial action. They imposed a £1,500 pay rise on everyone. The majority of staff who work for Openreach, repairing people's broadband, people's phones and people who do installation. On top of that we have people who work for BT. BT keep making these claims about the pay rise. They keep quoting 8%. There was one person that got them 8%, 4% or 3.8% I got. And when inflation's 10%, 11%, you know, it's just not even keeping up. Don't forget we didn't get a pay rise the year before. So that's over two years. What they're offering means a pay cut for everybody. I mean, for you it's for a pay cut of, of about 7%. For me, I'm slightly, I'm slightly less, it's about 5%. Yeah, so. Some of our lowest paid workers are on 21,000 a year. These low paid workers who were supposed to have been given a the £1,000 uplift to get them to the living wage. Um, so when this £1,500 was imposed, they're saying that these people have got an 8% increase. But what they actually did was only give them an extra 500 to take them up to the £1,500. The CEO gives himself a 32% pay rise, gets half a million in his share dividends, and our members are really, really struggling. They've even got food banks that they've set up in the call centres for people struggling, which is why he's got the nickname Food Bank Phil. Phil's just not negotiating, he's, he's just not talking to us. He's not even come out and said anything since, for, for months. You know, he's, he's just hiding away in one of his multiple houses that he's got, his multi-million pound houses. We've not even asked for a percentage. We've just asked him to come back and talk to us and improve on the offer that they've done. We know BT have got enough money to pay us. 1.3 billion profits this last year. Second most profitable industry apart from financial services. And they paid out 700 million to the shareholders. And even our chief finance officer, 25%. 25%. Yeah, pay rise. BT put their prices up by 9%. So they want their customers to pay that, but they're not willing to give their staff a decent increase to keep up with the cost of living. I was working <laughs> in here, BT Town myself, all through the pandemic, having to travel in, you know, with my own health and safety and, uh, and health at risk. You know, we've all, we've all done it. We've all kept the company going, and, and this is our reward. There's a clear erosion of our workers' rights. They want to get rid of older grades where you can progress and get paid, and keep them on a low wage. Annual leave is cut back now for new recruits. When you join the company now, you go on a three month sick pay, three month half pay. It used to be six months. And segregating the young and the old. My son done work experience here for one week. When he walked onto the first floor here at Colombo House, he saw a, hit, a, a, a sea of grey. That's what he called it, a sea of grey. And then he went to a call centre he said, they were all young people, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, on, a, on basically nothing money. Us, on, on the ground, the, the, the workers, we're the ones that are suffering there. And everyone's suffering. And all those bosses up there, they're coining it in. We're getting the same reaction in all different sectors about people standing up for themselves, saying we're not accepting a pay cut. Everyone's saying that enough is enough. We've got to embolden each other and uh, take action together. If the unions could come together and call a national strike, yeah, everyone should come together because it's got to stop. We will win this dispute as long as we stick together, which we are.